okay, here we are. <laughs> well, it's nice to hear yourself like a minute after you said something. <laughs> Um, here we are, right? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. We are streaming. It's going to be a delay, so I don't think there's going to be much interaction, but let's get people pumped up for this event. Um, Dr. Brodsky, uh, Dr. Martin Brodsky here, Dr. Giselle Carnaby. Um, you all are really the instigator, it seems like, behind this. Why? What does this matter? What is this conference all about? You're up first, Marty. Oh, you want me to go first? Okay, I was I was thinking ladies first, but you know. Um, so the whole inspiration behind this conference that we're having uh, came from a conversation that uh, Dr. Deborah Souter and I had years ago at the ASHA conference, and we basically were comparing how we thought about dysphagia. What was the definition? Is it a symptom or is it a clinical diagnosis? Everything spurred from there. I'll spare you the drama and all the years of discussion. And we'll kind of pinpoint that all of that led to um, asking uh, Dr. Carnaby to join us. And if it's okay, we can stick with first names during this because this is, this is getting to be a tongue twister. So Giselle, Deb, and I uh, put together an R13 grant uh, that Deb holds at the University of Kentucky and that the three of us are pursuing in terms of the research and understanding what the literature tells us about dysphagia that drew into this grant getting us to a conference. And the first conference last year was pure research. It was, that's all it was. The conference this year, I would say is easily 80% clinical information with fantastic speakers who are so well-known, uh, world-renowned speakers, um, from the neurologist that we work with, Dr. Greg Jaika, to Georgia Malandraki, Michelle Troche, Michelle Chuchi, and Emily Plowman, all speaking on topics related to assessment and treatment of dysphagia in varying populations as we age. Um, so I'll just leave it at there and I'll, you know, um, let Giselle have an additional comment. Sure. I mean, one of the interesting parts is, you know, we came at this initially from a research standpoint thinking, okay, you know, everyone's going to have the answer to this, right? There's going to be an answer out there. And that's what we do in clinic too, right? We reach out and go, there's got to be an answer out there somewhere. And lo and behold, there wasn't and everybody disagreed. And so actually it's really interesting, even as we're talking to people about coming to the conference, people are telling us they still disagree. And because there's so much contention over what the hell is this thing that we all devote so much of our time to, we have to start where it all begins and that's with the patient and the clinician, right? So you've got to go back to where all good ideas come from and that's the clinic. And so we've invited what we consider five of the preeminent speakers in dysphagia to come to this conference and to tell us their perspectives about their different areas, not just in our topic about defining dysphagia, but in general. Tell us about, for example, Dr. Malandraki is going to talk about teletherapy and how it's used to meet the needs of older adults, whereas we're going to hear from um, Dr. Jiker, who's going to tell us what they do in differentiating mild cognitive impairment from dementia and how we might be able to apply some of those concepts to dysphagia. We're hopefully going to hear from Dr. Troche telling us about supranuclear palsy and other really significant neurodegenerative diseases. Dr. Plowman's going to tell us about post-cabbage cardiac and stroke patients and how that intersects with aging and what kind of clinical management might be best for those individuals. And then Dr. Tucci is going to like end us off with Alzheimer's and dysphagia, which is a growing population for anyone who's out there working in dysphagia and adults. And so this is not just a research conference. There's nowhere for this price you can get five preeminent speakers. You can go to ASHA, you may not see that many people that we're going to put on one platform. So this is like value added. If you're in the clinic and you're looking for direction, you want to generate 
people coming to your clinic who are interested in what you have to offer, these are the kind of information that you can take off the shelf and run with. And so this conference offers way more than just be part of this research. It's offering best price evidence that you can get your hands on quickly. I remember I we got into a conversation a little bit earlier this week, and I'm dating myself when I tell you that, but these are 1995 prices. I remember signing up uh, and I'll, I'll keep the outfit anonymous, but I remember that they would have weekends at the Holiday Inn, <laughs> virtually no food whatsoever. You got your ASHA credits and it was like 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8, whatever it was. We've got 1.5 ASHA CEU credits for a hundred bucks if you're in person. And we worked out mm -hmm. such a phenomenal detail with the Marriott Philadelphia downtown that this is the least expensive price at a premier hotel directly across the street from the Reading Terminal Market and various area attractions for less than $200 a night. I, I, it is, it, it's mind blowing. And I can tell you, I've stayed now, sadly, or fortunately, one way or the other, I've got my Marriott points. I've stayed there three times this summer and spent $250 plus every single night. So what I'm really excited about is seeing these brand new, young, uh, just amazing speakers and hearing cutting edge information that can be applied. I mean, I really am excited about this. This is uh, something you didn't get this opportunity. It's not that common that you usually get like one speaker or two maybe, but to get everybody there talking and being engaged, being able to rub shoulders, not just with speech pathologists, but with the whole range of professions that are going to attend this thing. So even if you're online, even if you're in the audience online, you get to interact with these people. These are some of the best minds in medicine, in ENT, in GI, in neurology. They're all turning up to this thing. So I, I guess I can't say enough that this is a really golden opportunity. This is an all-star cast. We've got uh, effectively 25 people on the faculty of this program, most of which these are names that have contributed to dysphagia for many years. I'll give you an example. Bill Ravitch started back in the, what, late 80s? Um, and the original issues of dysphagia, he's going to be there. He's now at Yale School of Medicine. There's one example, and he came from Hopkins, I have to say, I have to plug Hopkins a little bit. Bonnie Martin Harris is going to be there. She uh, was at Medical University of South Carolina, is it now Marty, at Marty, Northwestern? Who, who's that again? Bonnie? I don't know. Bonnie Martin <laughs> Harris. For those of Never you in the back row. Never heard of her. <laughs> uh, Mark Nicosia, uh, this past year's president, president. of DRS. Uh, he is an engineer by trade. He works at Widener University. He will be there. Uh, Mark Moss, who is an intensivist, former president of the American Thoracic Society, and um, certainly a huge contributor to the dysphagia, understanding post-extubation dysphagia within the last five to 10 years. Um, Madison Macht, for example, was his fellow uh, and got into some of that literature in the early 2000s. Nicole rogus Puglia is going to be there from Wisconsin. Uh, Samantha Shun from University of Oregon, uh, or Oregon Health Sciences University. I, mm -hmm. I, it's somewhere in Oregon, I think, uh, is where that is. Um, uh, who else is going to be there? Yvette McCoy. Uh, Yvette McCoy is going to be there. Everybody knows Yvette. Um, she's been working... 35 plus years in the field um, and has been everybody's clinician um, from Pennsylvania all the way down to Southern Maryland. Um, let's see. So the, is this is a there? meeting of minds, I guess. Yeah. And, and they're not just research minds, they're clinical people. This is really right. the way we get everybody involved. Arthi Madhavan, uh, who is at Penn State University, is also going to be joining us. Yeah. I, th th this is an opportunity to not just sit and be in the room in addition to the invited speakers, 
but it's an opportunity to talk with these people one-on-one. -on -one. We're mm -hmm. going to have tables where people are going to be able to visit each other, interact with each other. This is going to be a fantastic opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one time with these individuals, leaders in their respective fields, mm -hmm. leaders in dysphagia. And we and want even, everybody. Yeah. And even if you can't make it to the in-person, there is that opportunity to have the similar experience on the online option. That's exactly right. Um, I, you know, of course, if you do show up at the Marriott, uh, warning, the room block closes end of business tomorrow. Let me be very clear about that. At the end of business, August 30th, if you're watching this later, the room block will close. That $199 per night price is not guaranteed. So at the very least, if you think you're coming, book your room now. You can cancel it later if plans don't close at no risk to you. Just make sure that you book it so that we can get you in there at the least expensive rate. Okay? But everything is available on the online and we'll be able to provide you a link uh, associated with this video as well. So Marty, something I'm coming at this from the perspective of a clinician and educator. I'm not a researcher. I mean, a couple single subject capstones that I've worked on, but I'm not a researcher. That's just not my thing. And I'm very excited about this because I think you're building bridges, not just between researchers and clinicians, but I think you're building bridges in the other directions too, um, from SLP researchers and clinicians to MD researchers and clinicians and all the, you know, dietetics, all of those who are involved in this, because we have to get a, a diverse perspective from people who are outside and who see dysphagia and the aerodigestive tract from a, a, a different perspective. And I just, I love how this is building a bridge to clinicians that they you know everybody is has input that it's interactive they're there's not they're not just there to be in the audience but they're there to provide their input and um you know be taken very seriously as we integrate the best of what we know and try to figure this out our That's clinicians are critical i mean i can't stress it enough the best ideas come from clinicians and even to drive research it comes from clinic mm -hmm. it really does because if you're not taking that information back and not applying it to our clinical populations, then what's it worth? In reality, we thrive because of our clinical machine, the machine that drives thought, that dr drives progress, that drives the future. And so we need clinicians to be involved. We need their voices. We need their input. We need their ideas. They're at the cutting edge. Or if we want to make it a, a military term, they're our frontline troops. They're experiencing this every day. And because of that, to simply not make those connections just seems esoteric. It's stupid. I, I you know, I, I can't agree with both of you any possibly greater. Um, I, I'll add to it. I'll pile on as the expression goes and just very simply say, you've heard this colloquially for years. It's all about the patient, right? Yeah, yeah. It is all about the patient. The now, whether you're coming from the researcher standpoint, you're coming from the academic who's teaching that clinician, or you're coming from the clinician standpoint, end point to the position, to the uh, patient who's sitting in the bed or sitting in the chair in front of you, it is all about the patient. And wouldn't it be nicer if we were all and better to all be on the same page with the same understanding. I've said this in, in previous online uh, offerings that we've done, Tim. Everybody understands what a fracture is. Everybody understands what a stroke is. Everybody understands what a heart attack is because it's clearly defined. Unfortunately, dysphagia, swallowing disorders, or is it the swallowing complaint, is not clearly defined defined and we need to get there in order to get on the same page makes sense makes sense it's hard to hold a discussion that's meaningful and gets anywhere if you can't agree on terms that's exactly right I mean, we want everybody to know that this is you know it's kind of got a whole bunch of stuff in it it's got that 
cutting edge clinical information coming from our researchers. And a lot of these people are clinician researchers, so they're seeing patients every day. All and then we've, we've got also this activity where we're trying to use all of these individuals from all the different multidisciplinary areas to come to some kind of consensus on what everyone this is. has a voice. Everybody has an opinion. Why not put your opinion in vocal form during this forum and let us know how do you think about dysphagia? Let's shape the future together. That's what this is all about. And for those of you attending, I'll just dangle this out there. For those of you attending in person, we've got pretty nice welcome reception in store. In addition to Dr. Jaika giving us the keynote address that very same evening, Friday evening, he's going to, he was actually, and I'll just uh, kind of revisit what Giselle said a little bit earlier. He was absolutely the key inspiration in our meeting last year. A guy who was talking about Alzheimer's disease and the differences between that and mild cognitive impairment. The, the area of neurology, the medicine of neurology was in a quandary in very much the same way as we are right now with dysphagia. He lent his perspective and that opened up the doors to our understanding and how we go about getting onto the same page. He's the guy who has just rewarded uh, or awarded a huge research award at the University of Kentucky for the work that he has done his career in Alzheimer's research. Mm -hmm. He's the one speaking and giving the keynote address on Friday evening. Not to mention he's really down to earth and great to listen to. He's yeah. just, he cuts straight through all the rubbish, gets straight to the point, and he's a really cool guy. My so. promise to everybody is that, yes, he is a neurologist, and I don't care where <laughs> you are, you are going to enjoy his presence. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think he pretty much blew us all away last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want to just briefly go back to the networking component of this. Mm -hmm. I, the students I work with, just anyone I have contact with, I try to emphasize how important networking is. You meet, and that's one of the reasons that I have the Swallow the Gap podcast. It's not just to get ideas out there, but it's for people to see that all of these researchers are, I mean, not all of them, but most of them are very humble and very personable. And you can reach out to them and talk to them and hold conversations, send them an email. And that bridges a gap because it gets clinicians involved with researchers sending ideas or, or getting a, a better understanding of, of a publication from the person who published it, that type of thing. And so the networking component of this is, is tremendous to people. It could just be a you know, a three minute conversation that you get into that might answer one of the questions that you had about seemingly contradictory publications or something like that. There's just so much to get from it that it's, um, I, I can't, I don't have words to say how valuable networking has been for me um, and mm -hmm. how much I think people should get more involved with it if they can. I think we all engage in it in a certain, to a certain level, but these events certainly improve that oh, yeah. because yeah. yeah, it's touchy feely. Now we can actually see you, you can see us. It's not just an email that comes out of the sure. ether. Um, and, you know, I know just in my own uh, career, how many people have just randomly reached out to me and they've ended up being lifelong friends and terrific partners in all sorts of stuff, sure. clinical predominantly and also research so yeah it's like yeah it's a golden opportunity it, it's it yeah i exactly what you said i some of my best collaborators live in different continents um and i never would have met them had i not reached out and spoken with them at a conference i promise you mm, um but but you know one of the key things about this is this is where it begins for many people. Mm. You know, I, the names that I mentioned before, I promise you, if you're in dysphagia, you've read at least one of those articles. No question in my mind, whether you were a student, you're a clinician, you may have even been in high school, but you read one of their articles. I promise any one of them. What's really interesting is they're all sitting in front of you. They're all approachable. They're all down to earth. 
every single one of them loves what they do. Yeah. And that's infectious. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. Very infectious. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Okay. No vaccine necessary. <laughs> there you go. We hope not. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Marty, I probably wouldn't even be having this conversation with you had you not come out to the RMU conference, the Hard to Swallow conference. And I got to see you, got to sit down and eat and hang out. And it turns out like you're, you know, you're all right. And, and you think I'm all right, I guess. I don't know. But you put up with me at least. And it's been fun. I freaking loved it. So Let, listen to him know undercut you. himself. I, you know, by the by, <laughs> we had breakfast a couple weeks ago when Tim was visiting with his in-laws and his, and his family. So um, we found a cool place where I live. We mm -hmm. went out, we spent what, two hours out at breakfast. I played hooky. Oh, it was about three. <laughs> three. Okay. Time flies, man. No, but yeah, you're you are right. You reached out to me out of the blue. Um, and the two of us completely hit it off at the conference. We enjoyed each other's company. We enjoyed the discussions we've had. How many years ago was that? Three? That was 2021. Yeah. Almost, almost. Anyway, it was three years ago. Yep. And here we are right now working together. And by the way, everybody, so that you know, Tim will be joining us at the conference. He's the one running the online platform. So thank if you. you for Tim no other reason. Your come support. To see me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to plug in the fact that, you know, I think one of the things I hear a lot from clinicians in particular, and I'm in constant contact with clinicians through other online educational stuff and trainings and stuff like that. And they tell me, you know, my colleagues don't take, they don't take me seriously. They don't see me as a valued member that I'm constantly having to fight for my role. I'm constantly having to remind them what I do. This is a way to get beyond that. We're stronger together and we're stronger when we collaborate. Yep. And knowing that and being part of that and being able to advertise that, that's going to support you in your clinic, in your everyday practice. It's going to help you move beyond that. And you're going to be able to talk with a level of understanding and, and a level of commitment and involvement that you might have had before. And so I think this is all sorts of sort of downstream effects from attending this, being involved in it, getting your word out, getting your voice heard. I, we literally uh, across the faculty for this conference have hundreds of years of experience <laughs> in the clinic. Just between, I let Party me just put this. Has hundreds. Of let, years. let me, yeah, I I may look like I'm a hundred years old, but that's a whole other <laughs> story. Giselle, Deb, and I <laughs> alone have over a hundred years experience. Oh, wow. Okay, that's really scary. Shh. I, you know, I. You're gonna make me want to go back to get more Botox. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, let's have a conversation. Okay, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has their own experiences. Nothing to say that what we know is better than what you know, but let's figure it out together. Yeah. Yeah. I go back to this cliche that it's like you got a bunch of sparks, you know, every one of us are a little spark in some way and they fizzle out, you know, more potential to fizzle out if they're alone, but you throw them all together. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. Like we could, you know, build something crazy. We're like fireflies. Fireflies. That's right. <laughs> Light up the sky. Right. Illuminating the world of dysphagia medicine. Mm -hmm. Exactly well, right. Any parting words that y'all have? This has been great just to hang out and get this information out there. Very clinically focused. That's mm -hmm. one of the major take homes I have. Yep. The, the, it, would, it begins and ends with the clinic. The fact that we're having some consensus panel, you know, at the end of the conference yeah, there's a little bit of research there, but it's all with the goal of the clinical. It's all with the goal with the patient at the end of this. It's the How do we make life better for us as clinicians, for us as researchers, for mm -hmm. us as educators, and for us as patients? Well, even with the research, it's the integration of the research, and that is inherently clinical. So there you go. That's it.
Yeah, it doesn't go anywhere unless we can disseminate this and take it back to where we started from, which is what Marty's talking about. And, you know, do yourself a favor, invest in your future. This is a way you can do that. You don't know where this is going to go. Uh, you don't know who you're going to meet. As a young clinician many, many years ago, I came across to America from Australia and I attended one of the early dysphagia conferences before it was called the DRS, before any of that. And I met a young Joanne Robbins and I watched her present her first presentation, I believe. And I was inspired. It, I went away from that conference going, oh, I want to be like her. She's amazing. Yeah, And that's the sort of stuff. And then you through these sort of events, you can get connected. And you, who knows where that's going to take you? Clinically, True. just personally, invest that's in yourself. It. Absolutely. Yeah. It, this is an opportunity to do it for so few dollars compared to the offerings that are out there. And yeah. the gains on the other side are literally legacy making. Yeah. Well, you've made it very in, in person, very inexpensive. So it offsets some of the hotel costs, the travel costs or whatever. But I mean, if you're within driving distance, I, sorry, I, I hate to sound so salesy, but I really, if you're within driving distance, man, a hundred bucks, we can be there. <laughs> like there's, I would, I, I'm from uh, a little bit South of Pittsburgh in Morgantown, West Virginia, originally like five and a half hours from Philadelphia. I would probably be driving to to see this if you know. yeah get a friend split the cost split the petrol there you're there for sure absolutely and for those of you who don't speak australian that's gas <laughs> oops sorry oh, <laughs> all right well thank you both very much um we'll post some information on how you can sign up qr code the link and everything but it is rebrand r-e-b-r-a-n-d dot l-y slash define dysphagia that's rebrands.ly slash define dysphagia. There we go. You got it. Awesome. Registration and hotel link are in that link. Very cool. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Great to thank see you. you. Thanks, Tim. Chat later. You're welcome. Appreciate yeah. it.